Um, let's also talk about something you do also have an option about whether or not you want to pay for, or you do in this case, um, Omid Scabie's book, Endgame. I mean, let's give it more publicity. Goodness me, could it have had any more in the last week or so? Um, big battles over these uh, accusations of two royals. They don't say racist royals, but this accusation is that there were concerns raised by somebody, uh, a senior royal. Now, we know they were named, of course, uh, in the Dutch translation uh, as uh, Princess uh, of Wales, Kate, and also the King, King Charles. Um, now, Scobie has said he didn't ever write a manuscript that, that had their names in. This couldn't possibly have happened. No idea, some mistranslation. It always smelled a bit strange. Well, now it's revealed, according to the uh, papers today in The Times, that the agent for Omid Scobie, a United Talent agency, this is under Utgivers, um, had earlier sent a draft version to the Dutch publisher, sorry, uh, as under Utgivers, which did contain the names. So there was an original with it. Now, talk of legal action by the royals. Apparently, there's going to be some summit between William and Kate uh, and the King and Queen to this uh, this week. Um, but but also, um, lots more lots more claims about, you know, Harry and Meghan being pushed out by royal circles, not being invited to the Duke of Grosvenor's wedding next year, which sounds like very, very petty. But given that he is, you know, godfather to your child and he's not inviting you to his wedding, that basically says, Harry, you are persona non grata, you are out. Yeah, I mean, this whole claim from Omid Scobie that this, this, uh, these names just magically appeared in this book was ridiculous. In fact, the only thing I've seen that's as unconvincing as that was the work that he's had to his face. Uh, more Botox, more pullbacks than I've ever seen on a, on a man. But look, Harry has burnt his bridges. And I'm not surprised that people like the Duke of Westminster don't want him at his wedding. Harry's made clear. He hates this country, he hates the institutions, he hates the family that yeah. he was a part of. He doesn't want to be part of it. And on your happiest day in your life, yeah. why would you want somebody oh. there that is going to take all the focus off you yeah. and your bride and put it onto him and his petty yeah. disputes? It's bad, enough when, it's bad enough when a woman turns up to a wedding in a look at me, look at me outfit. But it's, I mean, Meghan doesn't know how not to. She'll wear beige that she wasn't allowed to wear when she was royal, apart from all this. Oh no, she did have to wear when she was royal, but continues to wear now. But she is one of those women. I'm sorry, any bride would go. I don't want her at my wedding. No, exactly. But it does. It is quite telling, isn't it? But again, as always, this tissue of lies and accusations just basically, you know, starts shredding and falling apart as soon as you actually start examining it, doesn't it? I mean, it doesn't really feel... I mean, do you think there's a likelihood of a legal action? Uh, well, I hope so. It would be nice to see the courts occupied by somebody other than Prince Harry, who, of course, <laughs> yeah. has got his legal claim. I that. get another legal claim tomorrow for three days uh, at the High Court against the Home Office, demanding taxpayer-funded security whenever yeah. it lands in the country. Uh, I hope Charles begins to actually just say, do you know what? Enough is enough is enough. Yeah. We are not an open target. Never complain, never explain is fine. But when a member yeah, of doesn't your work own anymore. family no. just continually throws grenades all the time, you've got to ask yourself, at what point do you stand up and say, no, this is wrong? But it, but it is very, very clear how much the British public sympathies and indeed, like the, crucially, the American public sympathies are really gone with... Uh, you know, the Charles and the, the Camillas and the Cates and the Williams as opposed to Harry and Meghan. And that's the thing. You have no cachet other than as a royal. What do you make of uh, Bob C, the Tory MP, regular on this show, uh, that he's actually putting through a, a, a bill in Parliament where he's going to attempt to, I don't know how far it will get, to strip the couple of their HRH titles? They're not to use them, you know, on their note paper and things, but they still have those HRH titles. I mean, look, because I don't approve of titles anyway. I, I, no one's... You're not, you're not, you're not highness. I don't accept, I don't accept, I, I'm sorry, I just don't accept that anyone's below, above me or below me. Um, and I don't like those titles anyway, but it does seem to me there is an element where you're not a working royal, you don't like the institution, you apparently think everyone is racist, why do you want the title? Yeah, it's a dreadful institution, want no part of it yet, want every single Netflix, Spotify, yeah. piece of package, how do I want to be billed? his or her Royal Highness, the Duke and Duchess yeah. of Sussex. I've yeah, never seen exactly. somebody weaponise their title so much. It's an outrage. And it's it's really not the done thing in the royal family, actually, as, as a matter of fact, to use your title for commercial gain. And there is no question yeah. in my mind that that's what Harry and Meghan... But, of course, I love all this article, how they, how, they had to, how they had to sign a deal with Netflix and Spotify for sort of 120 million or something in total because they needed money. It's like, I mean, the man was worth about 30 million before... Uh, he even got married. I mean, I mean, how much money does anyone need? But there we are.